Hey, what's up, everybody? Real quickly, as you come on, just let me know where you're from. And if you don't mind, swipe over and invite your followers. Invite your followers. Chicago land is in the house. Good afternoon. Well, it's not afternoon in Chicago yet. If you don't mind, can you swipe and invite your followers? I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to get on. I have been taking a break from Periscope. Thank you, sir. Ganglin. Where is Ganglin? Where is Ganglin? Shanita, hey, hey, hey. Rome, New York. Thank you, New York. It's in the house. Hey, Miss Lady. Hey, hey, hey. I was waiting on y'all. <laughs> Erica, Periscope Sabbatical. Yes. You live in Richmond, yep. From Richmond. Real quickly, can you invite your followers if you just joined? Hey, Erica. That's cool. I'm not far. Awesome. 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 Good to see you, Erica. I've been checking you and your mom out. You guys are doing great things where you, you guys are. Thank you. Let's get some more people in here. I took a break last week. I don't know if y'all noticed. <laughs> Uh, Woodbridge. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Northern Virginia. Yep. All right. Richardson. Wushan. I have something I want to share, but I want to get get a few more followers, get a few more people in. Hope everyone's week is going well so far. Hope your ears were ringing. We said. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I felt pretty bad by not coming on. I know I'm supposed to do it. At least, if I don't do it no other day, I should do it on Tuesday. And I was kind of like getting my voice back from um, convocation. We had an awesome time in convocation. And the uh, Lord has really been speaking uh, to his people. You know, we noticed you did not come on last week. Right. So, yeah, I was, I'm doing some new things. I'm trying to be o obedient to Holy Spirit. So, uh, I'm just kind of going with the flow with things. I'm trying to finish some stuff uh, product-wise, so my focus is is primarily on those things. But I definitely wanted to share and continue to to reach out to you guys that are faithfully on and supporting um, our conversation, our discussions. It's, it's been very impactful. So we talked about honor this morning, and um, in the uh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta. The issue that I need to address. Give me about 30 seconds, guys. All right. All right. <laughs> Blood your, your hairline is receding. Well, that's what happens when you get a little bit older. So that's okay. I'm still blessed. Um, all right. So honor is honor important. Um, I think most of us, we learn honor uh, from the fundamental stage. We learn it in our household with our mother and our fathers. The first commandment with promise is to honor our mother and our fathers that your, your, your days may be long on the land that the Lord God, that God gives you. So the key to longevity is honor. Um, I think a lot of times in this generation, we try to skip out on honor and we miss the blessing of God. We miss the impartation. We miss the mantle because we don't understand or have a good concept of what honor is and what it's supposed to do. Uh, in the Bible days, they had such a reverence for honor that they were being tricky, sneaky, conniving to even get honor. I'm talking about Isaac and his wife, Rebecca and Jacob. What was on Isaac 
that was so important that it, it required a, a scheme to even get the blessing from God because we don't recognize that. When we go to church today, we go in there, we have our cell phones out. There is no sense of reverence or honor in the things of God, and we expect a miracle. We expect a breakthrough. We expect God to come through, and we expect this, this awesome anointing, but our concept of honor and reverence is just not there anymore. So what is so different now than it was then in the days where they were literally fighting or cheating or conniving to get the blessing from the older generation. And and I've been uh, at a senior home for a few months now, kind of like imparting into the old people, but they're teaching me so much about uh, how to treat the elderly or how to treat this age group and this age bracket. They have so much to offer. And like they go through changes physically, they go through mental changes, they're losing their memories and they can't remember the things that they used to remember. But there's something in their mouth and something in their hands that this generation is missing. And if we don't take advantage or or, or or recognize what this generation is offering us, that, that generation is offering us, rather, the older people have to offer us, then we miss a very important mantle that I believe is supposed to be passed on throughout the generation. In the Bible days, the patriarch was very important because when, his, when he got old and he was getting ready to die, he would line his sons and his grandsons up and he would shoot out blessings toward them. He was like, you know, this is your blessing. I'm, I'm telling you you're going to be this. So the patriarch would speak into the, the uh, sons and the daughters' lives. They would say, hey, this is your mission to carry on. This is the part of me I want you to carry on. I want you to be the doctor of the family. I want you to be the lawyer of the family. I want you to be uh, the, uh, the athlete or the entertainer of the family. And they speak those blessings and God honors what they speak out of their mouth. So, you know, you go through this time where the, the patriarch is speaking and, 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 and they're releasing the blessing from God. This is what Jacob tricked Isaac into doing for him, right? This is already good. So, so now today we try to skip through honor because we think that, you know, we're just this wonder in ourselves that we miss out on the actual spoken or verbal blessing from our patriarchs. Blessings to you, Lady Liberty. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, so we miss out the blessing and the honor and the mantle that comes with just honoring those that have gone before us, those in, that pass down lineage. So there are things that we're missing out in this age that we haven't been processed because we don't have proper lineage. We don't stay in the place long enough and honor long enough to receive the blessing. I say this a lot, but you can't receive from something that you dishonor. You can't uh, 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 gravitate to the or, or take advantage of something that you dishonor, like uh, your body, for example. If you are not if you are not treating your body with honor, if you're not treating it as the temple of the Holy Spirit, then you're going to come up with problems. I say this all the time. You could drive a, a, a Cadillac. Absolutely. And you could drive a Cadillac or something that uh, requires premium gas. And, and you can put that regular gas in for a while and it will get you a point A to point B. But when you when it's time for that tune up, you're going to run into a situation where you're going need to need to replace all your fuel injectors because you've used the wrong product to to uh, satisfy the needs of that particular uh, manufacturer. All right. So you can you can try to substitute by honor and the blessing from God, the blessing from your lineage, the blessings from your father, the blessings from your mentor, the endorsement of those that are before you, the, the, those that are before you actually send you and catapult you into a different place. So honor is very important. And we cannot skip through this generation because they can't say the same words that we can or they don't have they can't articulate the way that we can articulate because each generation is supposed to be better we're supposed to be smarter and wiser you said, the bible says in the last days that uh, knowledge and information shall increase so it's no surprise no wonder that we're actually growing and accelerating at this rapid pace but we can't forget about our forefathers, the people that set the stage for us, the people that made a way for us to have what we have today. See, 
Isaac was losing his sight. He was going blind. So he had physical ailments. But uh, Jacob and Rachel still needed something to come from his mouth. They still needed the blessing to be released for him to go. You know, he's following this promise, but they, they knew enough to say, I need what's inside of him. We can't look at the generation before us as if we don't need them anymore. Just because they do things a little different, we, need, we still need the blessing out of their mouth. You know why? Because God honors honor. It's the key to longevity. You can be on for a season, but longevity says, honor says, honor says that I need to do it right. This is what made David's kingdom different from Saul's kingdom. David honored Saul as his leader, even though he was being uh, ridiculed, even though he was being persecuted, hunted down for death, David knew uh, something about honor. And because he honored it, his kingdom shall last forever. Jesus came out of David's kingdom. Saul's kingdom lasted one generation. It lasted only him. When you dishonor, when you break the rules of God, when you do those things, that cuts off longevity. You will not have longevity. You might have a season, but you will not have longevity. So honor is very important in the ways and the things of God and the things of God. So my question is this, do you want to have a season or do you want longevity? Because God can bless you in longevity. You can get the job done. You can, you can get around the whole city with regular gas. But when it comes to the longevity or the, the maintenance of of who you are, you're going to need what God has for you. You're going to need a blessing from your forefather. So honor, we got to, it's the first step to prom promotion. It's the first step to promotion. All right. It's the first step to promotion. And, and we go to church every week and we pick and choose what we want to hear, who we want to hear it from. Because they, uh, they, they, they don't fit the mode or they're not relevant enough or I don't like the way they said it. But we have to come in knowing that honor is the system of God. They have something to offer us. They have something to give us. And we have to be uh, in the place that we are ready to receive. You know, mantles don't fall. This is, this is the same test that Elisha had from Elijah. You want to walk around in a double portion, but you only want to do it on your terms. You only want to walk around when it's convenient. You only, you only want to show up when the cameras are on you. We cannot receive what we don't honor. Right. You cannot receive from what you don't honor. If, if you're talking out of the side of your neck from your leadership or, or people that are pouring into you, then, then uh, you have now made that word or that blessing of none effect. This, this is how it works. If you give the prophet a glass of water, you receive a prophet's reward, Right. So God honors the honor system. If, if you will receive what God has put in place for you, then everything that he's given you belongs to you. But if you don't receive it or you take for granted or you mistreat it or you misuse it, he won't give it to you. You know how we do with our kids. You know, I, I have my, my son. He wants this iPhone. He's eight years old, right? And he doesn't understand. He never worked a day in his life for, hey, how you doing, sis? He never worked. He don't understand that iPhones are hundreds of dollars. So he has his mom, old iPhone. But everywhere he goes, he lays his iPhone down and leaves it on a chair. And we have to go behind him to make sure he has this high dollar item. And, and we have to make sure he carries it because he's not going to be upset if it's lost. He's just going to come to mom and dad and say, hey, can you get me another one? But we understand the price of that particular item. So we said, hey, at eight years old, you're not ready for what you, you want. You're not ready. If you want God to know that you're ready, to show that you're ready, prove to him that you can handle the high value things, the high ticket things. There's, there's, there's a principle in the Bible that, that if you're faithful over a few things, then God will make you ruler over many. We, the problem is we want to be a ruler before we learn to value high ticket items. So honor starts first. It starts in our households, honor thy father and thy mother. And it goes with you everywhere you go. If you, if you take the honor system, Longevity, it'll give you longevity in your life. If you take uh, it to your workplace, it'll give you longevity in your workplace. It'll give you longevity in your career. So if you take honor from your home to your career, now you're growing in the ranks. 
you becoming the CEO, the boss. He's already taking you to another platform, another place, because honor was started at home. If it starts at home, then it can work at church. And at church, you can see the miracles of God. The problem is, is that we pick and choose what we want. And we don't have an honor system. Oh, I, I didn't hear my word today. I didn't get the right word today. Well, God has a word for you, but you're failing the heart test. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You, you, you it, it, It's going to happen for you. You just have to show yourself ready. I honor this. I honor my leaders. So you, you eat, you eat, you eat, and you don't, and you don't honor it. But you go to a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and you you'll tip handsomely or or you go to the restaurant and you'll say you customize your order. You say, give me a, a steak and cheese, sub, but let, let me have extra cheese and extra meat. And I don't care what's it, what it costs, because that's what I want. But when we go into the house of God, we don't have that. That's what I because that's what I want. Attitude. You don't give God the more because that's what you want. See, God always tests your heart. He always tests where you are and what you're doing. OK, he said, Al should I have no other gods before me. So, you know, you don't literally have to bow before an idol. You just have to give them your time, give them your attention, because your focus is your master. You can say, I love God, but my focus is um, my my relationship. Right. My focus is this. And my focus, if my focus is making money and money is drawing me away from from my relationship with God because, oh, I get an opportunity. I